Hello everybody and welcome to another video. Today I know this is probably a bit of a surprise um, since we have two new aircraft that could potentially get a video on my channel, 777 and the MD-11. And in due time they will definitely get a video. The 777 I'm really liking a lot, the MD-11. I have a few things I want to note on it, but we'll get to that once we make the video or once I make the video. But for now we're flying the uh, 737 800 from Indianapolis over to Los Angeles. It is a it is the trip time is three hours and forty nine minutes, about four hours of uh, block time, just shy over four hours. We expect to depart here in exactly forty five minutes, so let's go ahead and get the show on the road, shall we? All right, so the uh, preliminary, sorry, the electrical power up supplementary procedure. Really done by the captain, but whoever comes first is the one that does this. Battery switch on. Go ahead and go to the overhead. And my power is guarded, auto. Alternate flaps off and guarded. The wipers are in the park. Electric hydraulic pumps are off. The landing gear is down and we have three green. And then we can apply the ground power unit if it is available, which it is. We have 400 hertz and 116 volts. We'll apply the power. We can technically start with the checks here right away. So let's go to the fire panel. Verify the fault in the APU detection in op light illuminates and the overhead detection overheat detection light illuminates. And that all works as well. Today we require 27.8. only 136 people on board, or at least passengers. Alright, engine oil. At least 15 quarts. That looks to be correct, which is fine. That's good. Or a minimum of 70%, depending on what kind of scale you have. Hydraulic quantities are also checked and good. And if like oxygen appears, also at least a thousand psi, which is checked. Fuel rate lever down to ten. Air from fig works. Flaps up. Indication agrees. The parking brake light illuminates. We have sufficient pressure. Iron selector to nav. Voice recorder will select on. Light power comes on. Emergency exit lights arm. That's the attendant call. Verify that works. Get the position light to steady and logo light if we needed it. Alright, we'll go to the EFP. Request the data from Simbrief. Moments tool. Two, three, right. Optimum, optimum off. Max on. Import weather, EG of 25, and maximum takeoff weight. So the point of doing the calculations this early is verifying our maximum potential takeoff weight that we can take. And the maximum takeoff weight allowed is 167.8. Plug that in, hit calculate, and we can reach that. So that means our maximum takeoff weight is allowed to be reached but we're expected to only be at 154.7, so we're well below that. Same thing with landing dispatch, we're going to go ahead and calculate our landing weight at our destination. Taking runway 25 left, import from OP, okay. Um, packs will be on, landing flaps will be 30, NTS will be off, import weather, and calculate, giving us a maximum landing weight of 146.3, which is also our maximum landing weight. So we're well within margin. That's good to go. Next, we have the weather and ATIS. 2987, 1, 2, 3, time set. And we'd establish ground communications as well. The first flight of the day. 
take the aircraft documents together, make sure everything is on board that we needed. Make sure the airplane is uh, certified to fly today. We could do a PA system test, verify the PA system works. And the first officer would do the flight deck uh, access system check. Not simulated here. First officer will also check all the emergency equipment, make sure that's all there. I haven't actually checked to see if all the emergency equipment is actually in here. Um, we're going to skip that as well. Next up, first officer also checks the aft overhead. EECs are on. Passenger oxygen normal. Gun pressure check. Three green. Do the various checks. Check recall. Flight controls electrical fuel. NTS hydraulic overhead doors. All normal indications will cancel. So in case anything new shows up, you will notice it immediately. So after we'll turn on the wheel light for the walk around, we'll continue with the CDU pre-flight. Right, checking the progress page 1581 plan plans with 1584 so that's pretty accurate look our fuel is loaded seatbelt signs can come on and we will also get our passengers ready to board so it also calculated 7.1 at our destination the OFP and with 5.9 so that's good for now this will change once we get into cruise we also have a step climb on the way which we cannot program in here so um that's also fine The FMC is complete, we'll continue with the overhead. Connecting to step 2360, so we're going to plug the step altitude in here. Our elevation is going to be 120. I don't think feet, 126 I believe, so we're going to select 150. It's an even day, so we use the right system. Every airline uses a different philosophy behind this switch. Um, for the first flight of the day, I would typically go with whatever day it is first. So, right is 2, so that's an even number. So if it's an even day, I would use the right system. And then for alternating flights, for the same day, I would always switch around. Some airlines do whoever's pilot flying for that leg. That will be the starter ignition. Um, again, every airline does something different. 
It's officer checks. Light slow. Pull up. Wind shear. Wind shear. Works, uh, weather radar does not work. The TCAS test. TCAS test pass. And for the navigation frequencies. Navigation radios. We're expecting a return to runway two three left. We could use one five three. For the ILS for the runway two three left, we'll put in standby is one 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 five. And we can already select the course of two thirty. Captain's flow. Minimums for the return runway is 990 feet. The expected initial climb is 5,000. Do the pre-flight checklist. Oxygen is tested 100%. Navigation transfer and display switch is normal. Auto window heat on. Pressurization most likely auto. Flight instruments. Rack 313, 313 altimeters. 2987, 2987 within 35 feet and within 70 feet of fuel elevation, which is checked. Parking brake is set. Engine start levers are cut off. Pre-flight checklist complete. All right, so boarding has completed, and we will set up our performance in a page. A little lighter than expected. One twenty-seven point one. Our reserves for today is four point five. We'll execute that. We we'll clear that. We'll. We will clear that for now, put an N1 limit, and we'll calculate our departure. Let's, everything has changed, uh, everything has stayed the same. Dry, import, on, off, optimum, optimum, that's all checked. Import, we're going to go with 4, liner, and then calculate. It puts us as a, at a rating of takeoff, 26,000. Room temperature of 49 degrees. 94.9, 94.5. With the packs, that's going to change. Lots 5. And no noise abatement departure procedures of this can all stay. It is. 145, so with and one knot is checked. 150. 115 here. And uh, everything is vectored today, so we're going to leave LNAV and VNAV disengaged. Go ahead and start the APU. Alright, the APU is available. Frequencies and voltage look good. Flight deck to ground. Go ahead, flight deck. We will be ready shortly. Roger. All right, before start items. B 
the 4 star checklist. Flight deck doors closed and locked. MCP V2150. Heading 230. Initial altitude 5000 feet. Takeoff speeds V1145, VR147, V2150. CDU pre flight is completed. Rudder and aileron trim are free and zero. Taxi and takeoff briefing completed. Anti collision light. The collision light is on. Port star checklist completed. We are ready for pushback and engine start. Roger, release the parking brakes, please. Brakes released. Pushing back. You are clear behind, and you can start your engines at your discretion. Okay, start sequence two, then one. Brakes are set. Roger. Okay, the tow bar is disconnected and the equipment is clear. Clear to disconnect. Thanks. Have a good flight. See you later. Auto ignition. Pull up. Down. Control. Right. Left. Switch up. Rudder. Left. Right. Control. Before taxi checklist. Generators are on. Propeat on. Anti ice off. Isolation valve auto. Engine start switches auto. Recall checked. Auto brake RTO. Engine start levers idle detent. Flight controls checked. Ground equipment is clear. Four taxi checklists completed. The left side to the right side. Alright, so fuel 27.5. I'm gonna go ahead and note that down. Weather terrain, everything's good. Fuel has been checked. We're ready to go. Table, toga. Not thrust hold. Crosswind. V1. Rotate. How's red gears coming up?
thousand feet, climb thrust ascent. Plus one. Pops up. After takeoff checklist, engine bleeds are on, packs are auto, landing gear up and off, flaps up, and no lights. After takeoff checklist completed. Alright, so we are reaching the top of the descent within the next 15 minutes, so let us prepare for that. First things first, I'm going to go ahead and get the weather information. I'm simply import, and this should give me the latest altimeter. 3000, of course I would normally use ATIS, but I'm not flying online or anything like that. I'm going to use the easy way, the easy method. 3000, recall, check, nothing. It's off, packs will be on, landing times will be 30. Calculate, miss a VRF of 143. One, four, three. We'll stop about two thirds of the runway in. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to find any kind of information for at least in the charts for landing distances, what kind of exit we can expect. But let's just say we, that is two thirds, and it is a little less than two thirds. Um, I would expect to vacate Hotel 7. If we reach Hotel 7, that is the, is a high speed exit for Hotel 7. All right. So, inner ref is selected, we're doing 5 knot additive, arrivals page is entered, we can double check everything, or we not just can, we should, for the progress page, top send is in 67, brings it to 130 approximately, in this case 125 nautical miles, which is fine, 6.4, that's well above what it was planned, so all the restrictions are checked, we're not doing an RMP, 
for an RNAV approach, we're going to convert to ILS. For the descent, this restrictions are all checked. Forecast is selected. We can select altimeter 30.30 and execute. Minimums for the approach. LS runway two five left is three or four feet. We see our we'll reset our NCP to flight level two for zero. Our break level two. And we do the approach briefing. And then a descent checklist. Landing checklist. Engine start switches. Auto. Speed brake. Armed. Landing gear down. Free green. Landing. Flap. Free green light. Landing checklist completed. We're clear to land. Plus. Under it.
All right. Put down checklist. Fuel pumps off. Propeed auto. Hydraulic panel set. Flaps up. Parking brake set. Engine start levers cut off and weather radar is off. Put down checklist complete. Those two, it may interest the landing rate was minus 86. Pretty good. But not a perfect landing. I think it could have been more center line, but it wasn't too bad, especially for MSFS. I, <laughs> you guys know, I don't like flying uh, in MSFS when it comes to physics. But either way, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. We'll see you all in the next video. Peace.